It has come to my attention that my ward, Jim Hawkins, is on Portobello and that you have placed him in the custody of a villain whose reputation is well known to me by the name of John Silver. I'm officially informing you that by the next fastest ship from England, my solicitor, Mr. Evan Frost, will arrive with the necessary papers to take charge of the lad and return him to England, where I shall see to it that he is raised in the proper Christian manner. Your obedient servant, Squire Trelawney. This was delivered to me by the King's Counselor, Sir Percival Howard, just arrived from England. But Sir Henry, Excellency, I repeat, you can't let them do this. I'm sorry, Long John. Up until today, I would have had a different viewpoint. But after what happened here this afternoon, I'm of no mind to interfere. But Jim Orkins, he, he be like a son to me. And how shall I ever be able to tell Miss Purity? Oh, to bring such disgrace down upon us, how could you do it? To force the servants at Government House, where you're a guest, to walk the plank and almost drown him in the lily pond. He wasn't supposed to fall in. The plank broke. Shuttlecock, taffy pulling, bowling. Of all the hundred and one things you could be doing, you had to be a pirate. We were only playing pirates. A fine time you chose. When you had a chance to show your good upbringing before young Algy, Sir Percival Harwood's son, you had to press them into your foul schemes. I heard he were almost hung. Well, I didn't do that. Are you trying to tell me he hung himself a penalty? I didn't do it. Then who did? Not me. It's the first time you've ever done anything like this to me, Jim Hawkins. You told me a lie. It's the influence of that evil man. And when I lay my hands on that one-legged swab... I'm not buying Miss Purity. Don't make it worse. Now you'll stay in your room with naught but bread and milk. And you make up your mind to tell me the truth. I told you it'd happen. What else could we have expected? <clears throat> you and your evil ways, caring not for law and order, ripping and cutting, and laying his hands to anything that belongs not to him. Where else could it end? Have you gone daft? Oh, don't tell me you don't know the full of what's happened. Jim, with your wrong upbringing, almost drowned a servant at Government House today. And what's more, nearly hung a lad of quality, Algy Harwood. So that's the news you heard. Jim's upstairs in his room, locked in. And like you, you swivel tongue swab. He lied to me. Oh, purity, lass. Every word you say were true. I, oh, it, it was a black day for the young'un when he sailed onto my horizon. You're not that bad. Oh, yes, I be. And if the lads turned out bad, why, white is my fault. And mine, too. Living in a tavern and associating with ruffians. Ah, you're right. Uh, this be no fit place for him. Well, what can we do? Send him away. Send him away? Ah, there be a school in Bermuda for young lads of quality. The Rosé School. <laughs> They've shipped out there from England a, a, a whole crew of tutors from, from Eton. <laughs> The governor, he was telling me that Sir Percival R. would be sending his son Algy there tomorrow on the inter-island packet. But Bermuda, that's so far away. Well, that's just what he needs. Oh, I couldn't let him go. Oh. Ah, but Dick Beaver is good. Oh, it'd break my heart. Ah, and mine, too. <laughs> well, but it's the right thing to do. Well, maybe we could think it over a little, huh? No, no. Flint always said the white-hot iron don't hurt so bad if tis laid on fast. The packet sails on the 
aboard. Oh, Long John. <laughs> but it's only fair we should tell him now. say I'm guilty, Long John, because I'm not. See? Now, Purity, remember Flint's words. We are planning a new life for you, Jim. We be here to pack your belongings. You're sending me away? Ah, we are taking you to the Rosé School in Bermuda, where you learn proper manners. And when you grow up, you can take your place in life with folks of quality. But I'd rather stay with you. Long John. It's all settled, Jim. You don't love me anymore. Now obey orders. I'm Captain here. Now get dressed. We boards tonight. Tonight? Ah. Captain Backer of the packet. He be a friend of mine. So he'll give us our cabins tonight. The governor will be seeing Sir Percival and Lady Arwood off in the morning. So it'll save Jim the embarrassment of having to face him after his unfortunate behavior. Now look sharp now. Uh, 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 sit down there. Uh. Hello. Hello. I hope the victuals are good aboard your ship, Captain. I think you'll find the food quite satisfactory. Feeling faint, dearie? It is a little close in here. Uh, 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 uh. But I, I've got none. you have there. Uh, he be as polite and quiet <laughs> as the days be long. Thank you. We are taking him to the Rosé School for gentlemen. Well, blood and wound. <laughs> Our Jim be going to Rosé, too. Your boy is going to Rosé? Ah, <laughs> they might grow up to be shipmates together. <laughs> put, put a little red blood in your pasty face, young'un. <laughs> Algy is a little gentleman. Oh! Oh! Here, what's got into we lad? I'm sorry. Oh, can't you mind your manners? If you kick me once more, I'll bash your brains in. Yeah, I wish that you could all stop and have supper with us, but uh, I know the packet ship leaves at 4.30. Thank you, Mr. Forsyth. I know you're going to find Algernon a fine student and a willing scholar. Ah, and if Jimmy, just give him a touch of the back of your hand. <laughs> we'll be going back to the dock. Would you care to join us, dearie? You'd best go on without us. Yes, we have a few things to do. Ah, well, we'd like to spend a short time with you in the town. We are meeting some friends. Oh, <laughs> well, just as you wish. Uh, uh, come, Purity, we'll uh, shove off down to the arbor and get a good deep swallow of uh, salt air. <laughs> Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye. Now come along now. <laughs> now, uh, don't forget to lay it in to the lads and stuff their heads full of learning. <laughs> Off we go now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye, son. Goodbye, father. Oh, my darling, I hate to leave you alone. But you will be brave, won't you? Yes, ma'am. If it's all right with Mr. Forsyth, I'd like to tell you of a little surprise I've arranged. What? For your weekends, you'll have a small sloop that I've left behind as a present. And I'm sure you're going to pick only the right type of companion to associate with at this school. Remember, you are a Harwood.
thought you were down the hall. I was, until I got my hands on the assignment list. Give me a hand here. Captain John Silver and Miss Pinker. Say, he's a famous pirate. Well, he used to be a pirate. Why did you come to a dull place like this when you could be with him? He didn't want me. Can't say I blame him. You're not very interesting. I got the blame for the butler falling in the lily pond. What did you expect? That's the way I fixed it. But I thought you'd speak up. You are a child. You mean you didn't tell on me? There's nothing lower than informing on people. We're gonna have fun here. Pleasant dreams. Good night, gentlemen. You were magnificent. I wouldn't have taken it for you. the use. I don't care if they kill me. You have the wrong attitude. How would you feel if nobody loved you? I wouldn't care. I'm having real fun. When Mr. Forsyth fell through that broken board into the well, I thought I'd split. And when the horses ran away and the carriage went into the lake, it was a sketch. You laughed and I got cane for it. I don't see why you shouldn't enjoy these things too. I guess it's because you're always caught. We'll have to get someone else blamed for the next one. The next one? What are you up to now? The whole school's going up in smoke. First, there's the mutiny to draw off the tutors. That's where you come in. Algie Howard, my answer is no. While there are ways when I plant the powder. Algie, no! Gentlemen, gentlemen, what's the meaning? 
seen here, Briggs. I gave no permission to leave the room, but... Uh, uh, Master Hawkins! Come here. For this monstrous insubordination, you will be confined to your room for one week on rations of bread and water. The faculty will discuss your case, and your other dupes will be punished as well. Mr. Howard, I thought you were ill. I... I am. But what were you doing in my office? I wanted to see you, sir. Oh, good, fine. Come along, come along. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Sit down, son. I... I've changed my mind. I'll be leaving. Oh, come, come, don't be. I, I'm really just one of you young gentlemen, you know. I've got to leave. What's frightening you, lad? Let's get out of here! Under the desk! You traitor. How did you get in? I picked the lock. Sit down. I never heard the explosion. I did. I was Kane. You were? Fifty strokes. That's not much. But to a Howard. Nobody Kane's a Howard. I'm running away. Well, now. Where would you go? There's no packet until next week. I've got a boat. Just because you're punished once, you don't have to be weak and run away. Listen to who's talking. You ran away from Portobello. You're daft. Don't pretend to me. What do you mean? You ran away from Portobello to keep from being taken back to England. That's a lie. I read the letter from Squire Trelawney in my father's secret diplomatic pouch. Squire Trelawney said he was sending a Mr. Frost to take you away from Captain Silver and Miss Pinker. Swear you're telling the truth or I'll do you in. I read it with my own eyes. That's why Silver's hiding you here and you know it. Algy, you can't run away alone. You don't know anything about sailing a ship. You have to know dead reckoning. I don't care. I'm going anyhow. I'm coming with you. They do love me. Except for stealing provisions, Algy wasn't much help. We sailed for seven days with only a few light squalls. Then, off to the horizon, I noticed the sky was blackening up. And as Long John used to say, the glass were falling. And Captain Beckers told me that it was this gutter snipe of yours who influenced my Algy to run away. The captain saw the wreckage of Algy's boat at the end of the harbor. Heaven preserve us. We have you to thank for this. Our boy Algy is a good boy. I tell you, Silver, I'll see you hanged for this. I love you, Abby, your son. Be no more than ours for Jim. Wreckage or no wreckage, our lad will make it. Long John be right. That's how I feel. 
What do you know about what it feels like to have a child out at sea? How could I ever explain it to someone like you? Now, you listen to me, you fine popinjay. Because you have the fine manners and the silks and satins, don't mean you love your boy any more than I love mine. Now, you hold your tongue and your whining for them that's at your beck and call. Because I ain't. I'm sorry, Eloise. That common trash talking to you like that. No, Percival. I was wrong. We're both women. And our boys are in the same boat. I'm looking for Captain Silver. Uh, well, I be Silver, but I, I'm busy now. I'm Evan Frost from England, and I demand the custody of Jim Hawkins. Why, you... you slimy squid. If it were for you, our little Jim would be here now. He's gone? Aye. Uh, and maybe forever. break your neck. How could you be stupid enough to let that boy talk you into running away? Aren't you going to preach on me now? I'm no informer. Then I'll have to tell the truth myself. I was the one that asked him to run away. This is all very touching. But I have a duty to perform. We'll have our papers signed at Government House. And tomorrow there's a ship sailing for Bristol. No! No, no, you can't take them away! Your tears shall not swerve me one whit from my appointed task, madam. Mr. Frost. I am Portobello. I know that, sir. And I'm greatly honored to have made your acquaintance. I feel before I examine your extradition papers, I shall find them not in order. If pressed, your personal visa might be contested. And by the time it was righted, you would be quite unhappy. Why, uh, you've done it, Sir Percival. You've done it for fair. And as for you, you cringing bookworm, get your carcass out of this cabin. Why, I... I, I... Uh, get... Uh, get... 